This is episode 44 of the BioBalance HealthCast. I'm Dr. Kathy Moppin. And I'm Brett Newcomb. And today we're talking about dementia and Alzheimer's related issues. Uh, worldwide, it's estimated that 35.6 million people suffer from dementia in some form at a cost, a worldwide cost, of more than $60.4 billion, which is greater than the gross national product of all but about 17 countries. It's hard to think about that number. It's so huge. It's huge. And, and, and it's a serious concern. And it's a concern that many of us become aware of when we go through andropause or menopause mm -hmm. and we start to, to hit that place where we experience memory loss, short-term memory loss, we think, or we hope that mm -hmm. that's what it is, but we're afraid <laughs> of the consequences of that. Short-term means you can't remember something just having, having been said. I mean, just a sentence that was just said. But it's not short-term in terms of, you mean temporary. It's duration. Yeah. And temporary. I'm thinking about what you can remember. Yes. And that's what we're talking about. When patients come into my office, they do the questionnaire, and when they come in, they don't expect for me to talk to them about their memory. But that's one of the key things that I found as I've been doing biobalance health. We've been giving people hormones, estrogen and testosterone, mm -hmm. and their memory comes back. And a lot of women now talk to their friends because their memory is so bad and they come in and say, I need to have my memory back. I can't work anymore. I've quit my job. Yes, but, it, but it's more than an anecdotal awareness. It's, an, it's more than just somebody saying, oh, by the way, since I started taking this, uh, I feel better in terms of my recall or my, my memory. No, I awareness. mean, it's drastic. And there's data that supports it, though. Oh, you mean it's just not it's, it's something just I've just observed. Saying. That's right. But no, there's, <clears throat> there's a lot of data, but it's not in the OBGYN literature where the hormones are usually looked at for women. Mm -hmm. It's not in the endocrine literature in general but they don't deal with neurologic function. Yes. Uh, it's in the neurology literature, and I have to say I don't usually read neurology literature, but I went and looked for it and found it. Yeah, well, you so. showed me an article that says that there's, there's data out there now that says 29% reduction of risk for dementia mm -hmm. among women who take estrogen. That's right. That's and, right. And, and, and so that's, that's a, a scientific fact that corroborates what people come in and say anecdotally. Come, you know, I, I've that's been right. taking it. I'm better. That's right, but that's a long-term study. What I'm talking about at this point, and mm -hmm. we'll talk about dementia later, is, mm -hmm. is that this is just memory. Memory that you need, it's like your RAM. You need to have it going all the time. You mm -hmm. need to recall people's names. You <laughs> what am I supposed to do today? All drug the names, yeah. referral names. When mm -hmm. I had my ovaries out, I noticed immediately that I couldn't remember anything, and that's vital to my job. That was one of the reasons why I thought I would have to stop practice mm -hmm. is because I just couldn't remember anything and that for your doctor is really bad so until I got my memory back which was about six months after my my oophorectomy mm -hmm. it came back immediately because it was such a drastic change mm -hmm. so it was almost as if my brain had been hungering for hormones to help build the neurotransmitters and that's exactly how it works hormones stimulate neurotransmitters and those are the chemicals that uh, communicate between axons of your uh, of your neurons mm -hmm. the little the little end point mm -hmm. so there's a little the chemical is really like we call it electrical it's really chemical communication mm -hmm. and that decreases without estrogen and testosterone right so when we give that back all of a sudden the connections are all being made and our memory comes right back and we have a finite time to do that we have 10 years after we lose our testosterone and then 10 years after we lose our estrogen mm -hmm. to actually replace it and not have permanent loss of our neurons. Because those, those neurons will die if we don't use them and if we don't replace the food they need. They need estrogen and they need testosterone. Right. The, what Kathy's talking about is something that, for the scientists among you, would recognize the synaptic cleft, where, <laughs> where the nerve endings end, there's a pool of neurotransmitters. Right. And the messengers leave one end of a nerve, and cross mm -hmm. that pool and go to the other. Mm -hmm. And the hormones are what make that pool alive. And if they you don't have the hormones, it starts to turn into sludge, and then things can't get across the gap. Or so it doesn't have any communication. It yeah. actually doesn't even produce the liquid. Or the, what you're talking about is as uh, communicative fluid. It just doesn't make it. Right. So and there's without a 10 that. 10-year window to recover and restore that. Right. Without that, 10 years after menopause, say that, because that's much more mm -hmm. obvious. Menopause is an obvious change. 10 years after menopause, um, we don't build those neurons back. We don't 
we don't regain those neurologic functions. So I have a much harder time if I have a patient who's 10 years past menopause and I replace both their estradiol and their testosterone, they may not get every bit of their memory back and, mm -hmm. their, and their workings of the brain like organizational skills and instant recall of names. Mm -hmm. They may not have that back. So there is a finite time you have to replace these. And it's very important to do it at this time because if you don't, you may lose it. Well, it's interesting that you say organizational skills and rapidity of thought. There's a third dimension that you talk about a mm -hmm. lot uh, in terms of women especially, mm -hmm. and that's that multitasking component. Right. And you argue scientifically that there's a distinction that can be made mm -hmm. between men and women in their capacity to multitask that's mm -hmm. due to what? Well, it's been confirmed by many studies mm -hmm. uh, behaviorally, but it's also uh, that there's a, a part of our brain that's larger than yours called the corpus callosum. Mm -hmm. And the corpus callosum helps both sides of the brain, the logical side, mm -hmm. which is the left-hand side, and the artistic side or the creative side or the multitasking side, which is, is um, our left-hand right brain. Right. So those two have to work together to multitask. That's what we needed. God gave it to us specifically to take care of multiple children, cook, do all of the things that women were intended to do in the very beginning. Because if we didn't survive that, we weren't going to survive to be technologically independent and be able to have jobs outside of the home. So we had to live through that. That was a very good um, adaptation that he gave us so that our, both sides of our brain will work together. So, so the corpus callosum is, is like a tube that goes horizontally between the two hemispheres of the brain. Mm -hmm. And in women, it is larger. There are more mm -hmm. connective neurons. Yes. So the data flow back and forth is more fluid. That's right. And they're able to switch. They, they have a more rapid switching system for mm -hmm. multitasking. That, that's right. That's your contention? Absolutely. Okay. And it's more than your contention. It's the science. It's the science of it. Yeah. But, I mean, really, I haven't done any uh, biopsying of the brain lately. But, I mean, I'm reading the articles by, by the physicians and mm -hmm. by the researchers who do. And that's, and that's just a fact. So... All of this begins to become problematic in menopause or what you call for men andropause. And what I call for women, testosterone uh, deficit. And that's where I wanted to go. So, so talk about the hormones involved, the testosterone and the estrogen. Testosterone uh, generally in women decreases uh, about 38 to uh, 38 on up, depending on your genetics. And so when your testosterone starts dropping, when it gets to a critical level, it comes from your ovaries, when it gets mm -hmm. to a critical level, then that's when symptoms begin. And it seems that as the, te as the testosterone drops, different symptoms appear. And one of these symptoms is memory loss or short-term short memory loss and ability to do multiple tasks at once. So basically, when the testosterone goes down, that is one hormone that affects the axons, the neurons, everything that we were describing before. Mm -hmm. And then women have a second change, which is menopause. And that happens later after andropause, sometimes 10 years after. Then that's a second hormone, that's estradiol. And when that decreases, then we lose more memory. And is that a second 10 year window or are they overlap? It's a, it's a second 10 year window. Okay. So 10, 10, years 10 years after window testosterone, for each set of hormones. 10 years after estrogen. Okay. Mm -hmm. And in previous episodes, we've talked about the glandular system mm -hmm. and how they are involved in responding to cues that are hormone cues. Can you talk about the pituitary system and how that works? Because you, you've said that the ovaries and the pituitary are involved in uh, sending the right signals that affect memory capacity. The uh, pituitary controls the ovaries. Mm -hmm. It stimulates uh, the ovaries, and when the ovaries do not respond, when they're, they age, mm -hmm. and the pituitary starts increasing its, uh, its uh, stimulation of the ovaries, that's when we get hot flashes. FSH goes up, LH goes up. Those are the two hormones from the pituitary. The ovary's not responding, so when that happens, the ovary stops making testosterone first, and then later estrogen. So when those two things cycle through the brain, they go into your circulation and they go to your brain, crossing the blood-brain barrier, mm -hmm. which is a barrier that's kind of like um, a sieve or, or a cheesecloth, something that keeps out the bad stuff, the bacteria and stuff. Right. But hormones, when they're in their free state, not bound to a big protein, 
go right through and then bathe your brain in hormones. Without that, your brain is hungry for hormones and stops functioning as well. It's like you didn't put oil in the car. Yeah. And, and you know, this is interesting to some people in, who are interested in the details and the specifics. But what you, <laughs> what you face most of the time are people that come in and say, I'm really losing my sense of self. I don't work the way that I used to work. I don't work the way that I'm supposed to work. I'm terrified of what that means. Mm -hmm. You know, can you help me? And part of what we're trying to say here is that there is help and that that doesn't have to be the, the fear that you live with or the way that you function. And there are scientific explanations that are available that explain mm -hmm. the nuts and bolts of how it works. That's but true. at the end of the day, the message <laughs> is with hormone replacement therapy, especially with bioidentical pellets, mm -hmm. what happens is your short-term memory uh, improves, mm -hmm. your basic uh, sense of, of self and capacity and functioning improves, mm -hmm. your multitasking responses improve, mm -hmm. and you will have that experientially whether you know the science about it or not. Right, you don't have to understand it yeah. to get better. And so many people are relieved when they come back to see me after their first dose. One of the things they're so relieved about is that they can think again. Well, I have a lot of patients <laughs> come to me and they say, I'm coming because my world's falling apart because I think suddenly, uh, is there such a thing as adult onset attention deficit disorder? Right, right. And I, I think you have the same experience. I mean, from mm -hmm. what you said, people come in who haven't been diagnosed with that, haven't thought of themselves as having it, mm -hmm. but suddenly they're too scattered, they can't focus, they can't recall the facts, mm -hmm. they drop the ball from the multitasking mm -hmm. cascade, and they say, I'm going crazy. You know, yeah. can you help me with that? Or they just, they're, I can't function, what am I going to do? So yeah. what I do is I replace their hormones, mm -hmm. And sometimes I find people who actually do have ADD and ADHD, <laughs> Suddenly, and yeah. they weren't diagnosed because they're in our our age group. Mm -hmm. When as children we Nobody just asked were, us about yeah, they it. just yeah. told us to sit down and shut up and stop moving around <laughs> and stop as, fidgeting. As fidgeting could, is ADD. Could just do that, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so so basically, I find I I replace the hormones. The patient gets better in many ways, mm -hmm. but they still say, oh, I'm still I'm scattered. Mm -hmm. I can't quite organize myself. And then I ask them if they have piles all over the house. Mm -hmm. Piles of unfinished things. They start and they don't finish. Lists That's of the ADD. Lists they make. Yeah. yeah, well, I do that too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, truly, ADD is something that should be treated with the proper drugs and not just hormones. Oh, absolutely. It's just a, I mean, a it's lot a of people. It's a real legitimate independent issue. Absolutely. Yeah. So sometimes I have to send them for, for a consultation for that because mm -hmm. that's not my, my general practice. Mm -hmm. but, but in general, they're so relieved and they can do their jobs and they get their jobs back. Many women who come to me have, have lost their jobs or given up their jobs because they can't think. Or I had a teacher last week, couldn't, couldn't think in the classroom. Yeah. The kids were overwhelming them because they couldn't think on their feet. Yeah. yeah, and she's yeah. just like deer in the headlights because she was miserable. Those are so pervasively real concerns for almost everybody as they get older. Mm -hmm. But there are more serious issues that are not risk factors for most people. Mm -hmm. Alzheimer's and dementia. Just very quickly, can mm -hmm. you draw a distinction uh, among those? Dementia is a, a permanent loss of both brain matter and ability to think. Okay. but it comes from multiple different sources. Right. You can have strokes that cause it, mini strokes, that what they call those vascular. You can have um, multiple genetic disorders, like Alzheimer's, that actually coat, coat the neurons so that they can't work anymore. They have goo all over them and they can't communicate, and then the brain shrinks. Okay, so, so that's not hormonal. That's genetic and it's biological artifact, like a stroke, which right. may have a hormonal Right. because if you use hormones, bioidentical hormones, estrogen as well as testosterone, if you use both of those, then you delay the onset of many of these so things. you can buy time. You can buy time. If you have questions about, about this podcast or comments about it, you can email us at podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can read my blog at brettnewcomb.com. And if you'd like to know more about Biobalance Health or bioidentical hormones, visit our website, biobalancehealth.com, or call 314-993-0963.